In this second module on credit default swaps, we're going to introduce you to a very simple pricing formula for credit default swaps. And then using this uh, simple formula, I'm going to show you how you can price CDSs on a spreadsheet. In this module, we're going to start with a very simple CDS pricing formula. The value of the CDS to a buyer is going to be the risk neutral value of the protection minus the risk neutral value of the premiums. We're going to assume that the default event is uniformly distributed over the premium interval delta. So let's walk through each of the pieces that go into constructing the value for the CDS. The risk neutral value of a single premium payment on date TK is going to be delta times S, delta is the period, times S, which is the spread, times N, which is a notional amount, times the expected value under the risk neutral measure at time zero of ITK divided by BTK. Recall. ITK is the, prob is the indicator function that the entity does not default, is not in default. And BTK is the cash account at time TK. So this quantity here simply is the discounted value of the event that there is no default up to time TK, discounted back to time zero using the cash account BTK. Again, we are going to assume, as we have done in the modules corresponding to defaultable bonds, that ITK and BTK are independently distributed, and therefore I can take the expectation separately. If I take the expectation separately, I'll end up getting QTK, which is the time zero probability that the bond doesn't default up to time TK. This quantity, which is ZTK zero, is simply the expectation or under the risk neutral measure of one over BTK, which is nothing but the price of a zero coupon bond, which pays $1 at time TK. This can further be simplified as the discount rate up to time TK. So what's the risk neutral value of all the premium payments? Just sum this over all time K. So it's K going from one through N, delta times S times N, which is the coupon payment. This is the probability that this coupon has to be paid. This is the discounted value of that quantity. So the expected discounted value of the coupons is what the coupon payments are going to be. What about the accrued interest? We're going to assume that if TK is here and the some default time tau happens, it's uniformly distributed over this. So the value of coupon that you're going to be paying would be approximately half. So that's what this quantity here is about. This is about approximately half the coupon. And this comes from the fact that we are assuming that the default is uniformly distributed over the interval TK minus one to TK. Now, what is the probability that the default occurs at time TK? It's ITK minus one minus ITK divided by BTK to discount things over. Again, just taking the expectation and using the fact that the default is going to be independent of the interest rate dynamics, we end up getting that this quantity is going to be delta SN divided by two, QTK minus one minus QTK. This is the probabilities of the two indicators times ZTK zero, which is the price of a zero coupon bond which pays $1 at time TK. We can, dis we can simplify this further and write this quantity as the discount rate. If you add up the two quantities, this tells you the risk neutral value of the premium and the accrued interest can be approximated. And the approximation here comes from the fact that we are approximating this uniform distribution. There's also another subtle approximation which I don't want to go into in too much detail. And that comes from the fact that if you look at the hazard rates, those are going to be going monotonically down. So even if you assume that the period that it's going to be in the interval is going to be uniform, the probabilities are going to be slightly different. We're going to approximate all of that and assume that it's sort of a flat probability on that interval. Okay, so sum that up, you get an expression. And we're going to be using this expression in the next page to try to figure out what the par value is going to be. What is the risk neutral present value of the protection or the contingent payment? It's one minus R times N. This is going to be the amount of protection that you have to be paid. There's another subtle amount here. We're trying to price the CDS. We go, but in the pricing, we are assuming that the R is known. But really, R gets known only on default. 
So in some sense, we are making an implicit assumption that these CDSs have been around. And so we have a good idea of what the expected recovery is going to be on the particular CDS that we are going to be pricing. What is ITK minus one minus ITK? This is the event that a default happens at time TK, TK and times BTK, which is the discount that I have to do in order to bring the, prob the quantities back to time zero. Again, I've gone through two steps. We can first write it as the price of a zero coupon bond, or you can directly go to the discount, and I've directly gone to the discount here. That is the quantity that is going to be the contingent payment or the protection payment. So S par, which is the par spread, is defined to be the spread that makes the value of the contract exactly equal to zero. You compare this term with that term. This term involves S and solve for S, and you end up getting the solve for the value, the notional amount goes away. It's one minus R. This is protection. Down here it's premium plus accrued interest. If you assume that the default probabilities remain sort of flat over the entire premium interval, so QTK is going to be one minus some hazard rate H times QTK minus one. Then you can approximate that par spread to be one minus R times H divided by one minus H over two. And if you recall back in the module, the first module in CDS, we had said that this is approximately equal to one minus R times H. And this is typically because H is assumed to be pretty close to zero. When H starts becoming pretty close to one, the approximation is not valid and one has to use a better approximation. As you would intuitively see, this is increasing in the hazard rate H and decreasing in the recovery rate R. In the rest of this module, I'm going to show you this pricing using a spreadsheet. So in this spreadsheet, we are going to price the hypothetical two-year CDS that we had introduced in the module. The principal amount for the hypothetical CDS was $1 million. The recovery was set as 45%. So one minus R, which is the amount that you're going to have to pay is 55%. Arbitrarily, I'm just setting the interest rate here to be 1% per annum. So using that interest rate, I can compute out the discount value, which is right here. So it's just going to be the quarterly discount is going to be R divided by four times the month count divided by three. So that this interest rate directly gives me the discount rate. The hazard rate, I took it from the calibration worksheet that we worked with for the bonds. So there we computed the hazard rate for a six month default probability. Here we are talking about three month default probability. So I just took that value and divided it by two. How did I compute the survival probabilities? I took the same formula. It's going to be the survival probability one time step before times one minus the hazard rate. The only difference is before I was using survival probabilities in absolute numbers, here I'm looking at them at percentages. What about the fixed payments, which are the fixed coupon payments that the buyer has to make? This is simply going to be the quantity of the spread divided by four, and I've left off the notional amount, and I'm going to look at the notional amount in a moment. So that's the fixed payment that's going to happen. Now in this column, row F, what we have done is we've taken the fixed payments and found their expected value. The expected value, which takes into account the probability of default. So that's E7 times D7 divided by 100. And this 100 just comes because the probability of survival is written as percentages. So the values in this column simply reflect the fact that this fixed coupon payment has to be paid only if the reference entity survives up to that time. This is the present value. We have taken the expected value, multiplied it by the notional amount, and because uh, these spreads are in basis points, I multiplied it by 0 0.0001 to convert it into absolute numbers, and multiplied it by B7, which is the discount value, to get the present value of the coupon payments. Done this for all time periods, that tells me what the total fixed coupon payments are but we still have to figure out what the accrued interest is. And in order to compute the accrued interest, we need the default probabilities. So here's the default probability. This default probability is just the survival probability times the hazard rate. And I've put that along this column all the way through. 
What is the accrued interest? If you click on that, it's we've assumed it to be half of what the coupon payment is going to be because we have assumed that this is going to be halfway between times the default probability again divide by 100 to convert the default probability which is in percentages into absolute numbers. What is the present value? You take the notional amount N which is of a million dollars times the accrued interest times the discount times again 0 0.0001 to convert the basis points into uh, absolute numbers. So this is going to be the present value of the accrued interest in different periods. Finally, what about the protection? What is the expected value of the protection? It's the default probability times one minus R divided by 100. The 100 again to take the default probabilities and convert them into absolute numbers. What is the present value of the protection? You multiply by the notional amount, multiply by the discount rate, that tells me what is the present value of the protection for the different time periods. So the premium leg now is going to be the sum of the present value of all the premiums and sum of all the present value of the accrued interest. And that tells you what the buyer has to pay. What the buyer will receive is just the sum of all the expected present values of the protection payments. This is the net value of the swap at time zero, the difference between the premium leg and the protection leg. So since the value of the CDS is positive, it's, it suggests that this spread is set too low. Um, it's a good deal for the buyer. The buyer is getting protection at too low a rate. If you increase that spread to say from 218 to 220 basis points, then you end up getting that that spread is too high. You end up getting that the difference between the premium leg and the protection leg is negative, which means that it's not going, it's not a good deal for the buyer. The spread has been set too high. You can compute out what the correct spread is going to be. So we're going to set the objective, which is the value and try to solve for the value equal to zero by changing the variable cells S, this is just a reference cell, and I'm assuming that it's going to be positive. So if you solve that and you wait for solver, you end up getting that the spread is going to be 218.89, which is slightly smaller than the, the spread that we had started with. Um, and this brings us to the end of this module.